Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have a video for you here today. AMC stock is down about 3.22%. We have all of your data you need to know on AMC stock. We have retail sales, your Goldilocks outlook that is really starting to take place. A soft landing looks a lot more likely today than it has over the past two years or so so we're gonna get into all of that information we do have some earnings coming here in after hours over the next 24 hours or so that'll also be important for our markets now i actually want to start this video off with this article um that says this it says bears are losing control over amc entertainment here's why it's a buy now so we're going to go ahead and get into it. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. And shout out to you guys that are a part of the trading community that hit over 700% on target calls today and are up over 100% on the PayPal calls that we have. They don't expire all the way until December uh, 15th or so. So that's an exciting one. But uh, target was definitely... Um, a really good trade one of the better trades we've seen in the last month or so but uh tesla was also uh, a pretty good one as well recently so if you guys want to come join it link down below in the description of this video let's go ahead and get started so the bears are losing control over amc entertainment here is why it's a buy so the price trend for amc entertainment has been bearish lately and the stock has lost 27.9 percent over the past week however the formation of a hammer uh, chart pattern in its latest trading trading session indicates that the stock could witness a trend reversal soon as bulls may have gained significant control over the price to help it find support with the formation of a hammer uh, pattern is a technical indication of nearing a bottom with potential exhaustion and selling pressure rising optimism among wall street analysts about the future earnings of this movie theater operator is a solid fundamental factor that enhances the prospects of a trend reversal for the stock now what is a hammer chart and how to trade it this is one of the one of the popular price patterns in candlestick charting. A minor difference between the opening and closing prices forms a small candle body, and a higher difference between the low of the day and the open or close forms a long lower wick or vertical line. The length of the lower wick being at least twice the length of the real body, the candle resembles a hammer. In simple terms, during a downtrend with bears having absolute control, a stock usually opens lower compared to the previous day's close, and again closes lower. On the day the ham hammer pattern is formed, maintaining the downtrend, the stock makes a new low. However, after eventually finding support at the low of the day, some amount of buying interest emerges, pushing the stock back up to close the session near or slightly above its opening price. When it occurs at the bottom of a downtrend, this pattern signals that the bears might have lost control over the price, and the success of bulls in stopping the price from falling further indicates a potential trend reversal this is like one of the most famous if not the most famous uh trend reversal uh that you can see and and and, and this is really on the chart here uh where you have a small body here and you've you've seen so much dilution and split it's hard to make these candles any bigger than this so it all looks small relatively speaking but when you've seen that low that you've seen yesterday, around $7.77, retraced to close back towards the end of the day, uh, towards the high of the day, over $8 per share, that was a pretty good sign of, again, a trend reversal. Now, to the contrary, when you get hammer candlesticks that are like reverse hammer candlesticks where you go way high at the beginning of the day or midpoint of the day and then you come down to close near the low of the day like you seen back here on November 6th tend to be signs of a reversal. Now the other thing I also want to point out what I personally like to look for is a wick right like like you seen on November 13th that comes down and is the low right the low point of the wick as you can see seven dollars 61 cents was that low well yesterday the low was seven dollars uh like 77 cents so not quite as low as the previous day so you're hitting higher lows at the same time you're getting a hammer candlestick pattern now 
We don't know if that's going to happen today. Uh, AMC stock is trading at $7.79. Preferably, you want to see a strong uh, end of the day move, a strong move into the close. And that would further solidify, potentially, we will see a trend reversal of AMC stock and see the stock start to go higher. So that could be exciting, could be right around the corner. Now, um, this is what increases the odds of a turnaround for AMC. It says an upward trend in earnings estimate revisions that AMC has been witnessing lately can certainly be considered a bullish indicator on the fundamental side. That's because empirical research shows that trends in earnings estimates and revisions are strongly correlated with near-term stock price movements. The consensus EPS estimate for the current year has increased 22.3% over the past 30 days. This means that the Wall Street analysts covering AMC are majorly in agreement that the company's potential to report better earnings than what they predicted earlier. If this is not enough, you should note that AMC currently has a Zach's ranking of number two, which is a buy, which means it is in the top 20% or more of 5,000 stocks that we rank based on trends and earnings estimate revisions and EPS surprises. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's ranked pretty good over here on Zach's. It was not a buy recently. Uh, as the last time I looked at a Zach's consensus estimate, you were not at a buy. You were at like a hold or a sell, right? It was not at a buy. So that is even new information to me. And if I'm talking a little bit weird, it's because I uh, just ate an M&M. So I'm like salivating and I cannot like it, it just gets in the way of trying to uh, talk fast. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and get into what in the world is happening today for our markets. It's another day where your Russell stocks are really outperforming. The Russell 2000 is up 0.92%. The NASDAQ is up about 0.2%. So you're almost 5x outperforming the Russell 2000 uh, or the Russell 2000 is about 5x outperforming the NASDAQ. So that is, I mean, a really strong day for the Russell 2000, up 1% compared to the NASDAQ. What in the world is going on? That is great news. Bond yields are, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Bond yields are actually moving higher today, which is a little surprising considering the data that we got today was, I mean, still pretty negative and, or still pretty bad, I should say. Um, and, not yesterday's estimate, but the day before that, the, the day before CPI, retail sales were estimated at negative 0.1%. That's what we got, okay, was negative 0.1%. But yesterday, based on the CPI report, the estimate moved down to negative 0.3. So we actually met the estimate that we had, but the estimate just went lower right before we got this retail sales data report. So Wall Street works on algorithms, right? This is just not weak enough for the algorithms. So that is why bond yields are going higher today. Now, PPI was really one of the bright spots here. It looks like there is no inflation coming on the wholesale side. Month over month, PPI came in at negative 0.5%. You are in deflation, on a month over month basis the lowest uh uh change or 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 the worst change or maybe the best change whichever way you want to put it uh for PPI uh since 2020 you haven't seen a drop like this so that's pretty dang disinflationary all in all great news today the data was soft but not soft enough to cause fears of a recession this could just be a little bit of a bounce back in bond yields, considering uh, bond yields have fallen so much recently. But I would look at the Russell 2000 and say, hey, you know, the Russell's up 1%. Even when 10-year Treasury yields are up 11 basis points, this does not mean all too much, really doesn't mean anything. You still have almost a 100% chance of a continued pause um, for December. And now there's actually a 4% chance of a rate cut coming on January 31st. So you're actually starting to price in the possibility of a rate cut by January 21st. Now for March 20th, 2024, there's a 1.3% chance of two rate cuts by March. So that would be one in January, one in March. 
and there is a 33.4 percent chance of a rate cut in march at least one and there's a 65 percent chance of a hold so you're starting to see the markets pricing in uh you know weaker fed policy rate cuts coming sooner and that is uh maybe offsetting a little bit of this rise in bond yields today that we're seeing now for may 1st that's when you're pricing in your first official rate cut and uh that is priced in with a probability of about 57.1 percent uh so Looks like by May we're going to get a rate cut, but we want to watch the economic data because if the data continues to deteriorate, then you're going to start pricing in a rate cut potentially even sooner. Uh, could be as soon as January, just depending how uh, we go really from now until the end of the year as far as the economic data is concerned. Now, AMC stock today is down 2.79%. Again, AMC has just been kind of in its own world. It really didn't participate in much of the move higher that we've seen in the Russell uh, even yesterday. Yesterday was a very historic day. You've only had a handful of days or so that you were up almost 5% on the Russell. So that was pretty historic. AMC did not react to the same degree as you would expect. And that was largely because of the dilution and the news that we have gotten lately. Just even on a fundamental basis, AMC is doing better than we expected. But that Marvel film just bombed theaters. So that's not exactly what investors uh, like to see, especially considering there's not a lot of films going to theaters in the first place. Now, we do have some earnings coming out here today and after hours. You have Palo Alto, uh, really cybersecurity company. That one could be important. Just the whole state of AI and software. You want to watch that one. Cisco as well. And then tomorrow pre-market is really the big one uh, where you're going to have Walmart that reports Alibaba as well, gauging kind of the Chinese consumer. But it's really all about Walmart now uh, after Palo Alto earnings. AMC, as far as options today, you haven't seen much activity yet as far as hedge funds and institutions. At least it hasn't been flagged. You have seen one order totaling about $15,000 with a positive order value of 0%. So that one order was a November 17th, $8 put worth $15,000 a 935 of those were purchased for about $16 a piece. So pretty short term uh, bet or, or trade on AMC stock just expiring this Friday. If you take a look at the entirety of the option activity for this week, you do have 66.5% of the calls or the vol or the open interest being to the call side. And 33.5% of the open interest being on the put side. Now, volume today, 51.32% calls, 48.68% put. So still, if, if you factor in retail investors, hedge funds, all of them, any of the options that are trading hands today, you are still more bullish than you are bearish. Even though AMC is down about 2%, that is uh, what I would call pretty good, relatively speaking. Now, if you take a look at the... A uh, short position here on AMC stock. You guys got to remember, take it with a big grain of salt. Uh, th this data is, I would say, not the most accurate. Uh, I think a lot of you guys would agree with me on that. Um, I personally don't believe it at all. Short interest of free flow at 10.2%, $162.81 million worth of short positions. Days to cover 0.88. 20.17 million shares that are currently sold short. Shares out of loan, 21.35 million. Cost to borrow, 1.33%. Utilization of 47.54%. And a short score of 60.64 out of 100. So these numbers, they might not look that great. Uh, but they were actually a lot lower. Short interest at one point was around 6%. Now you're getting to high levels of short interest again. I mean, you could make the argument, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a financial planner, I'm not a fortune teller, I, I, I don't have a crystal ball, I can't see what the actual numbers are and how many actual short positions we have. The SEC doesn't even know that information, so how the heck am I going to know that information? But um, yeah, you're back to 10% short interest, so that is uh, back to a more, uh, not normal level for AMC, but uh, more... Uh, 
respectable level. You could actually say the short interest, if it were to actually be 10%, is a pretty dang bullish sign for AMC in and of itself. Big problem we have with AMC now is just Adam Aaron and diluting shareholders. Maybe that's a topic for another video. Now, cost of borrow numbers, cost of borrow average, we don't have an estimate. Cost of borrow minimum, 1.9%. Cost of borrow max, 2.82%. So numbers here all not too impressive as well. I mean, it, it, it's, it just is what it is. I don't think those numbers are accurate as well. I think there's a lot of option activity that continues to hide uh, the short positions, right? We know this news uh, came out like a month ago that the SEC, a new rule change is going to shine a light on short selling. It's going to give us a lot more information. It might not necessarily tell us, um, you know, certain specific details that we might want to know, but it's going to tell us a lot more information than we otherwise would have, including who is short how much they are short, how long they have been short, what kind of collateral is used to back that short position. A lot of information like that that will be very interesting to see uh, what those numbers come in as. And, and I mean, if a lot of the shorts are being hidden currently, I'm not certain that data is going to get picked up. But uh, yeah, we'll know who does still have, um, you know, recognizable short positions on amc is citadel short on amc is you know morgan stanley the one that's facilitating a lot of these short positions or bank of america who is uh the real big money player behind this because we know there is uh, probably a bunch of them just judging on the ftd numbers that we have seen over the past uh year or two now so there you have it. There is that. Now, again, AMC stock is down 2.6%. I would like to see a reversal into the end of the day to move higher with AMC. I'm not going to hold my breath. If it happens, it happens. Great. If not, it doesn't change anything. That would just be what I would want to see. Now, the RSI is at 35.95, which is way under 50. Supports that we could see a bounce here really any time now. And if you pull up some other uh, indicators like the MACD, the MACD was bullish for a long time now, ever since really September as the stock has bottomed, really found that bottom in the mid $7 range and then trended higher and now you're back to the mid seven dollar range so the macd is slightly on the bearish side but again nothing to be uh concerned with in the slightest bit i will also point out volume is a lot higher than what you've seen for a while especially in uh the beginning of 2023 and uh you know 2022 time period so there's still a lot of activity around amc stock i think right now just simply put, we need to see some kind of bullish catalyst, some kind of good news that is not followed up with a dilution, uh, you know, proposal, right? AMC would be in the probably 20s right now if it wasn't for uh, the dilution that we got right after earnings. Earnings have came out great. Earnings were fantastic. You, there's, there's no gripe I can pick with AMC's numbers in the slightest bit. They were great right? Better than expectations across the board, but they hit us with that dilution. So markets, I think, are starting to get over this, but I think we really need to see some form of good news for this to uh, finally fully come to pass, guys. So that is going to do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.